We can place ourselves at the foot of the cross. We can pray a rosary, and we can meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. And these are not just spiritual exercises. We can allow ourselves to be in a space in our imagination that's actually changing our brain. The imagination is one of God's greatest gifts, I think, to the human person. It's really beautiful. Let's think about it for a minute. God is outside of space and time, okay? This is a really sort of metaphysical, abstract idea, but try to hang in there with me for a minute. He created us in space and time. The way that we relate to each other through our bodies, in this material world, in space and time, is through these five senses. So we know somebody's talking to us when we hear them talking, or we see their mouth moving. That's how we communicate. Remember, angels are the ones that can communicate by idea alone. But we need these physical five sense experiences to be in this world. Now, God loves us infinitely. We're his children. He wants to talk to us. And what does a loving father do for his children? He gives them whatever they need so that they can communicate to him. So for my birthday, when my three-year-old wants to give me a birthday gift, I give her the cards, the paper, the crayons, the scissors, the glitter, the whatever she wants. And then she puts the card together to give it back to me. She's communicating to me how she can, and I'm providing the means for her. God loves us that much. He gave us our imagination because the imagination is the one sense out of our six senses that's not limited or tied to space and time. Think about this for a minute. God who's out space, outside of space and time wants to communicate with us, so he created our imagination so that we could step outside of space and time. Now, where do we get a good sense of this happening? Look at your dreams. Your dreams are where your imagination is in full effect. What happens in dreams? Reality is suspended. You're talking to somebody and then their face morphs and then it's somebody else. You're walking, and then you're floating. And then you're running, but you're in slow motion. You're, I had a dream, I was walking underwater, and you're just breathing and normal as if you're out in the air, but you're underwater. It's separating yourself from space and time. This is not reality. And time itself morphs. All of a sudden you're a child, and then you're an adult, and then you're back, it doesn't matter. The imagination is capable of providing data to your brain which affects you, which is not part of space and time. Now, here's another amazing thing that can happen, for better or for worse, but this is just amazing about the person. If you closed your eyes right now, and I led you in an exercise to imagine that this room is on fire, I could look at your brain and see, with instruments, of course, that your brain is reacting as if the room is actually on fire. This is how incredible we are in our integrated bodies. The ideas that come through the spiritual realm into your imagination change your brain. So if I led you on that exercise, I could create a state for you in which you're, you're running for your life. And if I really did that long enough, you'd, you'd actually think the room is on fire and it'd be incredibly disorienting. Just like waking up from a nightmare and your heart is pounding, that's a real bodily experience. It's actually happening. And you've been sweating and you are actually wondering which state you're in still until you finally ground yourself in reality, in this place and time, through the material world, through your five senses that are stuck in the material world. Does that make sense? So this is a thing that's just true about who we are. But I think it's a gift from God because then we can use that reality, that instrument, that tool to meditate. We can place ourselves at the foot of the cross. We can pray a rosary and we can meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. And these are not just spiritual exercises. We can allow ourselves to be in a space in our imagination that's actually changing our brain. So do you have wounds from your mom growing up? 
Do you have wounds from your dad growing up? Do you have ideas that have affected you in your life and given you a different outlook? That maybe after you spend some time in therapy or in reflection or doing some mindfulness, this stuff comes out to the surface and you realize, I don't have the right idea about myself and I contribute it back to what I was taught when I was growing up. That's not the end of your story. Because we can place ourselves into deeper spiritual realities that are actually true like the perfect maternity and motherhood of Mary and the fact that we're actually loved by her, we can meditate in our imagination on that reality and it will change our brains. Literally changing our brains. This is not just spiritual. It is bodily. It's human. So this is the gift of the imagination. 